Amadov with his back into the corner at the turnbuckle. Not a place he wants to be with a banger like Darmos. And now Mamadov keeps his man off of him. Darmos, unrelenting, continues to plod forward. Darmos standing there right in the center of the ring. A little off balance there. Mamadov somewhat flat-footed and be well served to get on his toes and start boxing like the taller man that he is. There's no reason he can't take advantage of those long arms. He's boxing in the southpaw style. He should be using that jab like a piston, just like the elder Klitschko brothers do. Throwing it out there. One, two, three, even four times if he has to. Keep it in the face of Darmos, followed up with a big, big left hand. On the other hand, Darmos slowly walking his man down would be well served to get inside the long arms of Mamadov and start ripping shots to the body like you see there. So you have a stylistic matchup, the taller ranger boxer, the more stout, compact, likely heavier puncher in Darmos. It's a minute left in round number one. Darmos throws a chopping right hand, and there's a left hand by Darmos, and Mamadov content to stay on the outside, should be boxing, seems to be thinking more about how he wants to approach this. The first round is a crucial one. There's only three rounds in these bouts. It's the chance to take advantage to get a head up, a lead in the, in the, in the scoring, one which you could use to your advantage keenly throughout the remainder of the bout. But be that as it may, Mamadov seems content to ride this first wave and see where it takes him. And now the referee is going to issue a caution. And here comes Mamadov starting to put some punches together here with 20 seconds left. He throws a nice quick right left and another right left by Mamadov. And now Mamadov starting to show some signs of life as Darmos eating another right-handed jab. The long piston-like jab by Mamadov is starting to take shape. This is what we came to see. This is what we know he's got. Will he show it to us some more? And more importantly, will he show it to Joseph Darmos? And you hear it from the crowd as Azerbaijan takes a 7-3 lead after round number one. Let's look at some action from round one. You see Darmos eating a left hand right there by Mamadov. And Mamadov, there it is again, doing a keen job of throwing that jab, but then leaning back without losing his footing, without getting out of that pocket, he leans back and avoids the shorter armed punches of Joseph Darmos. It's a great way to stay in the action, to stay in the pocket. He doesn't need to retreat if he feels comfortable enough with his upper body movement and evasive and defensive skills. Jay Kowali getting ready to start the action up here for round number two. And the Azerbaijani crowd really getting behind their man Mamadov. Mamadov throwing a right and a left. And here comes Darmos. A left hook by Darmos. Doesn't quite find its home, but now Darmos goes downstairs to the liver, and he may find some more success with that. Why would that be? Because Mamadov, being the taller boxer and keeping his hands up high, is keeping much of that lower region exposed. He's fighting a typical Eastern European stance with a stand-up style instead of getting into a crouch. And as a result, he's leaving much of his right rib cage exposed for a big left hand by Joseph Darmos. Joseph Darmos saw a home for it. There you saw it again, a right to the body followed by a left. Will Darmos start to capitalize on that perceived weakness of Mamadov? A minute to go, or rather a minute down, in round number two. A left to the body by Mamadov. Mamadov doesn't want to stand there and slug it out, I don't think, with Darmos. He'd be better served going back on that jab of his, ride that stick into the sunset if he needs to, and wait for the opportunity to follow up with a big left hand, as he did in the first round. Right left by Mamadov, and Darmos not really letting his hands go, other than an occasional baby left hook to the rib cage, 
of Mamadov. He seems somewhat content with letting Mamadov set, set the pace of this action, which isn't going to do him any well, particularly since he's down on points coming into this round, and he's going to just go down by more points if he keeps that same approach. He needs to get more physical. He needs to bully Mamadov around the ring. There you see the look on his face. It was almost as if he said to Mamadov, that's right, I'm coming to get you. Well, let's see it, Darmos. Use your weight, use your strength, push him around, punch him to the body, get him up against the ropes, try and corner him, and do your work. Because right now, Mamadov is setting the pace. And even though he's not filing this, fighting the type of fight we'd like to see out of a taller man, it seems to be effective. He's standing there for the most part toe-to-toe -to -toe with Darmos. He's not taking full advantage of his jab, but he seems to be racking up points nonetheless. Now, Mamadov looks like he's willing to show his weight, or rather his strength, and push his weight around on Darmos. Unexpected strategy, but perhaps whatever works here. He may feel the energy, the confidence from his home crowd. He may not want to stand back and box. Perhaps Mamadov wants to slug it out toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Perhaps, just maybe, Tamar Mamadov is looking for a knockout in front of his home crowd. Referee Jake Yoda going to give a caution to Darmos. And now Mamadov, with just a few seconds left, is going to stand there toe-to-toe -to -toe with Darmos. And let's see what happens. That's the end of round two. And the Azerbaijani crowd really hearing it. Rather, giving it. We're hearing it. They're giving it to their man, Timur Mamadov. Just 18 years old. Look at the work. Look at the work effort by Timur Mamadov as he continues to throw his hands to the head of Joseph Darmos. Right to the head, a left to the head. Clearly not lacking for confidence, not lacking for heart. And there's another impressive 7-2 score for Tamar Mamadouf. Brings a total of 14 to five. He's got a nine point lead going into this third round. At this point, all Mamadouf needs to do to become a young Olympian for the Azerbaijani flag is to avoid harm's way. The crowd knows it. He should know it too. Let's see if he continues to try and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with this big man and look for a knockout. He will really win them over. And you and I, for that matter. And Mamadov starting to press the action not looking to run away and, 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 and stay secure with his victory. He's looking to rub shoulders, rub faces with this man, Joseph Darmos. And there's a nice right hand by Mamadov. My God, I think he is looking for the knockout. A right hand by Mamadov, a left to the chin. And Mamadov putting up an impressive showing here. Here comes Darmos now, although he's been more of a punching bag than anything else for Mamadov, he's showing some signs of life. He's getting some punches in there, but they're just like flies on an elephant at this point. The impact is close to none as Mamadov has all the energy and the, the glory of his countrymen on his back right now. A right and a left by Mamadov. Mamadov sticks out that jab. Now we see it again. We haven't seen it since the first round. That long jab. He should take it to the promised land. It will get him there if he uses it, if he's faithful to it, if he's honest with it. There's nothing better than an educated jab in this sport of boxing. Nice right-left, right combination by Mamadov. And here he goes with a right to the body. And now... Darmos continuing to chase him around the ring like a stuck pig to a matador. Make that a stuck bull. Just the same. Now the referee is going to take a pause in the action and boxing will continue. A lunging right hand by Darmos. Mamadov throwing a stiff jab out there. 
a right hand. And as we see the referee gonna send Darmos to the corner, he's got banged up pretty bad. He's got a bloody nose and a bloody mouth, but he's gonna be allowed to continue. There's 49 seconds left, there's a lot riding at it. And you always stand the puncher's chance when you got the size of a guy like Darmos in there. But not everyone has a puncher's chance. You gotta be a puncher, you can't just look like one. And Darmos hasn't quite shown that he could pack the wallop that he looks like he can. He's yet to really land a solid punch on Mamadov. And as a result, Mamadov's confidence has steadily increased. And he's put up three rounds of boxing that you, you, and you would be proud of here at the Haydor Aliyev Complex. Just 10 seconds left, and Mamadov has written himself a ticket to London. And as the final seconds wane down, you hear it in the crowd. The Azerbaijani people love that they have a new Olympian in their presence. And he wears their flag and he wears their, their colors. And his name is Tamor Mamadou, just 18 years old. Perhaps a child in this sport, but he fights like a man. And look at the Azerbaijanis. They are loving it. They are soaking it up. They've done a wonderful job, has the Azerbaijani Boxing Federation, along with Aiba, to host this spectacular event here. We expect this place to be at a capacity crowd later on in this tournament as we get closer to the final rounds. For now, the energy is palpable. And the winner, he is Tamor Mamadov, 24 to nine. He didn't just win, he won convincingly. And that's it as both boxers congratulate one another. We move on to the next heavyweight bout in just a moment. Making his way to the ring, Stepan Vudalija from Croatia. He's 26 years old. His opponent from Cuba is Jose Larduet, only 21 years old. Again, both of these boxers, like most in this tournament, bring a lot of a wealth of experience in the ring with them is Shanguli Meret Nivazov, the referee from Turkmenistan. Going to keep a close eye as the third man in the ring. Zooks, Basi, Kennedy, Martinez, and Yakub are the judges for this contest. Vugdalija, in 2010, just last year won the Croatian National Championships, took the gold in that one, and again, in 2011, earlier this year. On the other hand, Jose Angel Larjuet in 2008 took the Youth World Championships gold in Guadalajara, Mexico, and then in 09 took first place at the Pan American Senior Championships in Mexico City, and later in Milan took third place, the bronze, with a loss to Artur Berbayev from Russia, and in 2010 play second at the Cuban National Championships. And what got him here? Well, he took third place at the Cuban National Team Championships earlier this year. So there you have it. Vug Delija from Croatia and Larduet from Cuba.
Our duet coming from the highly touted Cuban national system of amateur boxing. Always the pride and joy of the Cuban Olympic squad. Larduet throws a left and a right, and Vugdalija tries to rip a right to the body, but the referee's gonna issue a caution to Larduet. And Larduet continues to press forward. He's got fists of fury here. Let's see if he could connect to the head or the body of Vugdalija. There's a body shot by Larduet. And now the referee is going to issue a caution to Larjuet to keep it up. A big right hand by Vugdalija from Croatia. And now Vugdalija pushes Larjuet up against the ropes, and Larjuet starts to retreat just a bit. Perhaps he felt the power of Vugdalija. Looks like a banger in there. And now the Cuban turns his man. He's got Vugdalija up against the ropes. Larjuet bringing a number of inches in height over his opponent, Vugdalija bringing a more compact puncher style to the dance. And Larjuet with a left to the body, followed by a left upstairs, and Vugdalija starting to push his weight on Larjuet. A big right hand by Vugdalija. A chopping left by Vugdalija, and here comes Larjuet. Larjuet with a left. And a left hand by Larjuet to the body of Vugdalija. And the referee is going to issue a standing eight count to Vugdalija. I guess that one must have really winded him. It looked like a baby hook to the body by Larjuet. But Vugdalija perhaps needed to catch his breath or so thought the ref. He got a standing eight. That would count as a scoring point, to say the least. And here comes Larjuet putting the pressure on. Perhaps he thinks he could finish this. He's got Vugdalija up against the ropes. Larjuet is going to need to uh, keep the pressure on if he's going to take down this mountain of a man. A chopping right hand by Larjuet. And the referee is going to issue another standing A count to Vugdalija. So Larjuet apparently doing enough damage in the judge's eyes to issue two standing eights, or to warrant two standing eights, here in the first round. And Larjuet continues to apply the pressure on a left right by Larjuet, scored. And the referee issuing another standing eight. Can't quite tell what's going on here. Sure, they look like clean punches, but just don't seem li like the type. And that is it, folks. The bout has been stopped. The Cuban has beaten the Croatian after three standing eight counts and a stoppage here in the first round the referee had seen enough he checks the reps of jose on hell large and he calls vugdalija to the center of the ring checks his reps as well and it looks like that is it folks this one is in the books, and the winner by an RSC is Jose Angel Larjuet, sending this Cuban to the Olympics in 2012. London. Congratulations to Larjuet. Let's take a quick recap here and see what prompted the referee to call this as he did. There was the right hand by Larjuet that I imagine the ref felt was Crucial enough, there was a left to the body. There's another right to the head and a chopping right there as well. And with three standing eights, it's, as they say, a wrap here in Baku. There's another right hand. The ref felt he had seen enough right there. Tell you what, Vudelija didn't seem too happy with that stoppage, or at least that final standing eight. But be that as it may, the referee is the third man in the ring, calls it as he sees it, and that one is in the books. We are down to two, two heavyweight bouts left in this afternoon session. We've had a very good day of boxing so far. And there's certainly more to come 
up next, as we said, is another 91 kilogram contest. It's between Ihab Al Matubli of Jordan and Wan Wan Xuan Xuan Wang of China. And we are awaiting the ring entrance of these boxers just any minute now. Okay, Ihab Al Mutabuli, 26 year old heavyweight from Jordan, making his way to the ring. And coming in now to the ring from China, Wang Zhuan Zhuan, 21 years old. This guy, keep an eye out for him. We saw him in Incheon just earlier this year where he took second place. Vladislav Malshev, the referee. Third man in the ring, Rispayev, Castro, Pizarro, Foti, and Chinar are the judges for this contest. So Al Matbuli from Jordan was in Chicago in 2007 for the Aiba World Championships where he took 11th place after a loss in the 91 kilogram weight class to Yushan Nijati of China. In 2009 at the Aiba World Championships in Milan, he lost to John Mabamba from France. However, in 2011, just earlier this year, he took sixth place at the Asian Championships in Incheon, Korea, with a loss to who else? Wan Zhuan Zhuang. And that means that this is his champ for redemption. It's a rematch from their bout earlier this year in Korea. Wan Juan Wang in 2007 took second place at the Asian Junior Championships, but then in 2011, earlier this year, in Incheon, he took second place with a loss to Mohamed Busan. So let's see if Juan Juan Wang can maintain his supremacy over Al Matbuli. Or let's see if Almat Bully, conversely, can avenge his first loss to Zhuang earlier this year. And we're underway. Almat Bully in the red corner from Jordan. Wang in the blue corner from China. And Wang with a very impressive build, very impressive jab. He's strong, he's fit, he's young, 21 years old. He's already got an impressive resume. And Al Matbuli coming forward. And there's a big left hand by Wang. Seemed to buckle Al Matbuli for just a moment. And now Wang showing some good footwork as he evades danger in the corner. Right hand by Al Matbuli. A left by Al Matbuli. And Wang boxing the southpaw style, as is the case with many of the boxers in this tournament. Sticking his right hand out there, he's got a long reach advantage. And if he uses it properly, should be able to make this an easy one. 
Not that Al Makbuli is an easy opponent, but that when you have such a long jab like that over your opponent, if you use it right, it becomes a very difficult weapon for your opponent to overcome. Well, let's see if he can. As Al Makbuli is pushed back slightly into the ropes, they're now in the center of the ring, and Wang throws a left and a right, and the referee is going to issue a caution to Wang for using the cuff of his glove. Not allowed to do that. And he gets the caution properly now. Wang throwing out that jab. Not really sure why he would waste his time throwing out the jab like that when he could throw it so much more authoritatively. He could use that jab as a real weapon. It doesn't just have to be a range finder. It could be a devastating punch if used properly. If he sets his feet right, and puts his weight behind it and really generates the power as it should from his legs and not from his arm, then that jab could actually knock someone out. Al Matbuli, on the other hand, is gonna need to avoid that jab by using good body work, by using the defensive tactic, tactic known as the parry, by keeping his hands up high, and if possible, by continuing to circle around his opponent and also try and use his footwork to get inside the long reach. Will Altmut Baduli be able to put all that together remains to be seen, but we have 30 seconds left in this round. Down goes Wang to a slip, and the referee is going to can basically have him wash his hands off on his jersey, which we've seen many times before, and boxing resumes with 20 seconds left. Wang light on his toes. He throws out a left hand and is quick to evade a right hand by Al Matbuli. Al Matbuli, to his credit, continues to press the action. He's moving forward. He slips down. Referee's gonna caution. He's gonna have him wipe his gloves. Wang throws a wild right hook, falls short of his mark. Wang, hands down, not a good place for, be, not for them to be, and certainly not a good habit for a young boxer at the ripe age of 21 to get into, especially not at this world level. You look at the best boxers in the world, amateur and professional, they know to keep their hands up at all times. And the ones that don't, they're either showboating or they're gonna pay for it somewhere down the road. Trust me when I tell you, hands up at all times. And here we look at some replay from the first round where Al Matbuli starts to press the action just a little bit, but Wang doing a good job keeping him off with that straight right hand. Anyhow, it's four to two. Wang over Al Matbuli at the end of round one here at the Aiba World Boxing Championships in Baku, Azerbaijan. I am your commentator calling this action from ringside Castle Chalice. And as the referee gets ready to call the boxers to scratch, we're gonna pick up with where we left off here in round number two. Al Matbuli from Jordan in the red corner and Wang from China in the blue corner. Here we go. Now Al Matbuli looking a little more active with that jab, using his feet to get inside and he throws a baby left hook on the clinch. And here comes Wang and he throws that right hand. He's light on his toes. He snaps a left that hard. And a wild right hand and a right hand counter by Al Matbuli. Now both boxers seem to be willing to trade blows. And Al Matbuli rips it right to the body and Wang throws a wild left. And now it looks like action's starting to pick up here in round number two. Al Matbuli really trying to let him have it. He's seen this style before. Hopefully he took some pointers from their last bout in Korea. And hopefully he's learned a few things since then that he could apply here and now. Wang perhaps figures he's beaten this kid before, he'll beat him again, just do the same thing. While there may be some truth to that, he should not rest on his laurels. There's nothing that a boxer can't learn. Or rather, there's always something for a boxer to learn. Even if they've beaten their opponent before, they could further strengthen their own skill sets, they could further try and exploit the weaknesses of their opponent and Wang would be well served to continue to try and press the action and come away with a victory. You know, sometimes a boxer's confidence is based on the preconceived notion of his opponent. And if a boxer is known to just try and skate his way to victory with points, well, when you get a fresh-faced youngster in there, who's not concerned about being knocked down, he'd be, be willing to take more chances. And this is why 
if a boxer feels that he has the opportunity to finish his opponent in dramatic style with a knockout, he shouldn't be ashamed to go for it. The very best, he gets an early stoppage and goes home for just half a day's work. At the very least, he puts a fear in his future opponent's eyes that he's got knockout power, and maybe the next time someone comes into the ring with him, they're gonna remember that knockout punch that he applied. So Wang, if he could do it, go in there, finish it. Al Matbuli looks like that's gonna be his only way to finish it victoriously is with a knockout because he just doesn't seem to have the mat, the stylistic tools to beat Wang on points. He's the shorter boxer, he's the slower boxer. He seems to be, well, perhaps their balance levels are equal. Neither of their balances are really that great. Wang seems a little off balance most of the time, and Almat Bouli seems to often plod forward to try and get in the right position instead of a, a smoother, more gliding approach. Just the same, if he does get inside, he may be able to, to really lay the leather. It just doesn't seem like he's got it. Here we're at the end of two rounds. Wang was up in the first. Wang's up even further now with a score of nine to four. So once again, Al Matbuli finds himself on the losing side of a point margin against Juan, Wang Zhuan Zhuan. In their first bout in Incheon earlier this year, Al Matbuli lost 19 to 15 by a margin of four points, and that was in the quarterfinals. This is in the round of 16, and he finds himself down five points as opposed to the four-point deficit that he lost to Wang earlier this year. So perhaps a, a very familiar and not a very good familiar, but rather a bad familiar feeling that Al Matbuli may be experiencing right now. Can he do something different? Did he learn from the last bout with Wang? Let's see. And as Wang now recognizes the lead, will he do what it takes to finish his man, or will he do just enough to win? They lock up in the center, and now Amat Ubuli is up against the ropes. The referee is going to caution Wang. There's a lot of tying up here, a lot of clinching. Not, a, not very many clean punches being thrown or landing, for that matter. And Wang is using his jab step now to jump in and out to keep the jab effectively in the face of Almat Bouli, while Almat Bouli seems very content with that, but doesn't yet seem to know how to get inside. And when he does, he's not really letting his hands go as much as he is just throwing baby check hooks, which aren't gonna have any impact on Wang and likely won't even rack up points if they're not considered clean and effective blows. So there's a double uppercut by Almat Bouli, which falls short of the mark, the mark being Wang's head. Wang comes back with a double right hand, both fall short, and we're halfway through this third and final bout, or rather third and final round, of our second to last bout of the afternoon. And here comes Wang with a nice right-left combination to the head of Almat Bouli, and Almat Bouli retreats as a result, and now Wang should really be jumping on this guy. He's got him where he wants him. He's got him retreating. He just landed a couple of punches. Keep the pressure on, but nope, Almat Bouli turns the tide and comes right back being the, the aggressor of sorts. He's aggressing with his feet. He's the aggressor with his feet. He's not quite the aggressor with his hands. That distinction would go, or that honor would go to Wang, who seems to be the busier fighter with his hands while continually, continually retreating from Almat Bouli. So, looks like we're gonna have a similar ending to this chapter as we did their last. Just over 30 seconds, Almat Bouli loses his footing. 
slips on the canvas, and here comes Wang. And now Al Muli. Wang again. The ebb and flow of two boxers dancing. At best, the waltz. At worst, the square dance. They're dancing nonetheless, and this is going to go into the record books much like the last one did. A points victory for Zhuan Zhuan Wang from China. It doesn't matter if it's pretty or ugly. It just matters if it is. And especially with the stakes on the line being the 2012 London Olympics, you take it however you can get it. And that's what it looks like will be the case for Wan Zhuang Zhuang. So as we await the decision from this second to last, men's 91 kilogram round of 16 qualifier at the 2011 Aiba World Boxing Championships, I am Castle, bringing you the commentary from ringside. Again, we want to commend Aiba and the Azerbaijani Boxing Federation for doing a tremendous job. Total Sports Asia for bringing their expertise to the production quality and all those aboard, making this a successful show. And there's the winner. By a score of 12 to 6, Zhuan Zhuan Wang, congratulations to you. Congratulations to Team China. You guys are going to London. And just a little recap of the action. Looking back here, you see in round three that Al Matbuli does what he can to try and apply the pressure, but it's just not good enough. And we shall await the final bout of this afternoon's session, which shall start to take shape in just a moment. It will be between Kazakhstan and Germany.